the Summit Chamber revisits dire predictions from April to see if summer is trending up. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News. First, summer has arrived on I-70. 141,600 vehicles traveled the mountain corridor through Summit this weekend, Friday through Sunday, up nearly 8% compared to last weekend, up 20% compared to the three-day weekend average this June for the second busiest weekend of summer so far behind the third weekend in June. A reminder that CDOT is closing all westbound lanes through the Eisenhower Tunnel tonight for work on the fire suppression system. Westbound lanes are closed from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. when traffic is diverted to eastbound lanes. Expect delays up to 15 minutes. Four separate incidents led to four close calls over the weekend when conditions were ripe for wildfire. It started Friday afternoon in Silt, where a hay baler malfunctioned, sparking a small grass fire. The Post Independent reports it was contained before reaching the nearby forest. Early Saturday morning, the Post reports on a helicopter crash in South Rifle. Both occupants escaped before the chopper went up in flames, setting fire to a grass field. Crews quickly doused the fire, and both people were taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Later Saturday, a semi-truck caught fire near Wolcott, where three Eagle County Sheriff's deputies used fire extinguishers to control the flames, likely preventing a brush fire there. And late yesterday, a home caught fire on Three Mile Road outside Glenwood Springs. The Post reports it burned two acres and forced evacuations before fire crews arrived. No other property was damaged and no people were injured. At least five major fires are burning statewide today, including a new fire north of Telluride on 62 acres outside Placerville. It started yesterday, forcing at least 14 homes to evacuate. It is now 50% contained. The Summit Chamber and Summit Prosperity Initiative are surveying local employers this month to see how COVID-19 disrupted business. Project Manager Corey Mim after the first survey in April. The biggest gut punch was just the reality of um, the impact on our small businesses. So based on the survey and the sales tax data, we're expecting it to be about a $325 million impact. That estimate is for losses through end of the year. Summit is home to 3,900 small businesses, and most do not have the depth or design to weather a second possible shutdown. The vast majority of those don't even show up on like the SBA's definition of small business. These are micro businesses, generally speaking, 10 or fewer employees. This latest survey, available now, gives Mim and her team a snapshot of Summit since the April survey, comparing reality to predictions, with an uncertain winter still looming. We saw how devastating it was for the ski industry to close down from the busiest week of spring break through the end of season, and if that happens, you know, at Thanksgiving or mid-December or something like that, I mean, that, that would just be crushing. All local business owners are invited to take that survey. Find it online at scprosperity.com. The Summit Chamber has announced Business Excellence Award winners for 2020, and Crystal 93 took top honors for Best Medium-Sized Business of the Year. Blue River Vision of Silverthorne won Best Small Business, Summit Express won Best Large Business, and the Frosted Flamingo Mobile Arts Studio was Best New Business. Mountain Comfort of Frisco took the Workplace Wellness title, Building Hope Summit County was Marketing Champion, Lenka's Loving Care was Customer Service Champ, and Innovative Family Dental wins the Environmental Champion Award. Congrats to all the champs. And in local sports, brought to you by American Family Insurance, the Weiss Agency, the Frisco Solo Series continues this Wednesday with 48 hours to run and record a virtual course on Frisco Peninsula. Sign up and see the map at townoffrisco.com. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News.